Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing something special, something a little different, but as you guys know, we are in full swing of summer here in Alaska, and we vowed to do all the things this year with the boys while we can, and we're super excited. Today we decided to bring the boys. It's a surprise, they had no idea we were coming. It was a two and a half hour drive from the cabin, but we're at the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center, which is pretty much like a zoo on steroids because you know when you go to the zoo and you try to see all the animals but they're sleeping or the exhibit is empty or they're hiding in their den and you can't even see them well the conservation center is not like that you've got bison moose bears porcupine I mean fox coyotes all the things all the Alaska type animals it's a refuge center where animals have been brought that have been injured and things like that and it's just cool because you get to see them up close and personal there's a little bridge you can walk on over the bear exhibit it's really neat we brought Parker last year and he loved it and so we thought Callan would like it too so we thought we would take you guys along with us It's absolutely beautiful out here. The last time we came, it was rainy. It's it's not right now, so <laughs> hopefully it stays that way. But aren't these mountains beautiful? It's absolutely gorgeous. A lot of them are still snow-capped. It's about 55 degrees today, but it's a beautiful day. Is there a bear? Uh-huh. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah, I want to go on the It's a huge up here. <laughs> Joe wouldn't throw you in, Callan. You know better than that. There's another hat.
cute. Okay, so watch uh, this. <laughs> Well, hello and good morning. Welcome back. We are home at the cabin. Yesterday was a lot of fun with the boys. The Wildlife Conservation Center never disappoints. It's just super cool getting to see all the animals up close. It's way better than the zoo and the boys enjoyed it. It's always nice to get out of the cabin and off the property for a little bit and not work on projects all the time and manual labor like we normally do. But today, as you can see, we are back home and we are gonna be working on a project today, something that we really, really need to get done before winter and that is putting up our wood shed. As you guys know, we live completely off grid here in Alaska and we get all of our, our power from our solar panels. And last fall we had to clear, I don't know how many, but a lot, like 75, 80 trees or so. Slowly but surely, we've been clearing those trees out, uh, chopping them up, hauling them up, and stacking them for firewood so they can be seasoned. It is wet wood, so we can't use it right now, but we need to get it stacked and put away and we have nowhere to put it. So far, we've been putting all of our firewood under the porch, which has been fine, but it's not ideal long term. We don't have anywhere to put it. And so as you guys know, last winter when we moved to Alaska, we weren't prepared as far as firewood and heating the cabin because we didn't get here until the first week of November. So instead of having like, you know, cords of wood already ready to go for the winter, Every three weeks or so, Joe and I were having to go into the forest and harvest firewood to keep the cabin warm and heated. So it worked out fine, you know, we're still here, we made it, but that's just not what we would like to have to deal with every winter. It's tough, especially on those really cold days. I mean, here at the cabin, the coldest we saw was negative 33 degrees, and that's super cold. And when you're running low on firewood, it's the last thing you wanna do is go spend six hours, eight hours outside harvesting more firewood just to stay warm. So this year we are trying to be proactive and one of our biggest goals is getting firewood stacked up and stored for this winter. And we have had a ton of rain so far this summer. I think we've had two, maybe three really nice hot days and the rest have been gloomy, drizzly like this or just downright pouring. So the wood's not gonna dry out that way. So we went and got some supplies, the things that we need. We may not get it completed in this video, but we're gonna get it started and uh, complete it shortly because it needs to get done. I'm gonna show you guys something. You know what that is? Do you know what that is? Can you see that? Let me zoom in on the window. Crazy, huh? It's bird poop. A big bird, apparently. You know, we get those cranes and everything that come out here and they love to land on the pond and hang out around the pond. And I woke up the other morning and I was like, what is on the window? And sure enough, you can tell the way the splat is it was flying over the cabin and dropped a bomb on us. So we're gonna have to get the ladder at some point and clean that up. 
All right, guys, so we have our solar panel here. Of course, here's the main cabin. We've got the solar panel. Our chicken coop is here, and we are gonna be putting our woodshed right back here where Joe's working. So the idea, obviously, is to have it close to the cabin so that when we need to go out and get wood in the middle of winter, we don't have to walk half a mile on the property to go to the woodshed, so it'll be nice and close to the cabin. I think we're doing 10 feet deep by, how long is it, Joe? 16? Yeah, 16 feet long by about 10 feet deep. Uh, metal roofing and uh, yeah, so it'll be a nice little woodshed. Somewhere to suck up all this wood that we've been working so hard on. Like right now it's starting to drizzle again and we gotta get this stuff undercover. He's like heavy duty, huh? Yeah. Just like that. So Joe made a deal with the boys. Y'all know how it is. We have like 50 million and 25 remote control somethings in Parker's room, whether it's cars, trucks, boats, helicopters, all the things, they're like missing batteries, missing pieces, whatever. Some of them work, some of them don't. So we were cleaning their room one day with them and Joe said, I'll make you a deal. If you guys agree to get rid of all of these half working, half broken remote control things, we will buy you some really cool remote control cars that can be played with outside. Because that's the other thing, the cabin is 576 square feet. So when you've got two little boys wanting to play with remote control cars inside the cabin, it's really loud and it's really like, it makes me twitch a little bit. So I'm always like, you have to play with them outside. You cannot play with those inside the cabin. Well, all of their remote control cars that they did have were not like made for outside. And out here it's very, you know, you got dirt and all these big rocks and stuff. They wouldn't even go out here. So anyway, Joe went on Amazon, bought these super cool trucks for them that are like off-roading dirt type remote control trucks. And they've just been in heaven ever since. So I'm like, way to go, Joe. Sunset. Sunset? What a pretty uh -huh. name. And it's raining again, don't you know? That rooster crows like every 10 seconds. We have three roosters and we're trying to learn their personalities before we decide which one we're keeping. And that guy is not doing too good. I love the sound of a rooster crowing, but that many times a day, <laughs> not so much. Oh, 
poop. Get out of there. Come on. Get out. Don't get in trouble, Bradley. Bradley, boo. Not time for fetch. We're working here. Well, Joe's working. Huh, Joe? Yeah. <laughs> no way, you're not working. <laughs> oh, I'm not working. I'm just, you know. The camera can hold itself. It can? I think it's so funny when we get comments where people are like, you say we, but you really mean Joe. Like, what do you do the whole time? Poor Joe's doing all the work by himself. I'm like, really? First of all, you don't see what goes on off camera. There's a lot of shots and things that are not filmed because I'm helping him do something, right? Always like, babe, hold this pole while I screw this in. Help me carry the wood over there. I mean, whatever. But I'm just saying, like for the ones that make those comments, like I don't do anything and Joe does all the work, who do you think films the content? The shot that you get to see of Joe putting dirt in the hole? That shot is filmed by me. And if I'm not holding the camera, getting the angles and the shots and all the things, then there's no video for you to watch to enjoy. And Joe doesn't edit videos, do you, Joe? Nope. Joe doesn't even know how to edit videos. He doesn't know anything about it. Uploading, video descriptions, tags, thumbnails, keyword research, all the things that go into making a YouTube video. Joe doesn't know anything about that. You don't know that. I do know that. I do know that you don't know that. <laughs> anyway, I say that to say we are a partnership. We are a team. Joe does the manual labor and I'm here to assist. But then I make these wonderful videos for you guys. So to the negative Nelly out there, knock it off. Yeah, it's like perfectly straight. It's like you, Joe. Perfectly straight. Yep. Ugh, where do you see my flag when I get it? Did you get yourself a flag? Yep. What kind of flag? The way to see. A surprise? Mm -hmm. Is it a flag that might get a shot? Maybe. Maybe? <laughs> That's okay, Joe. If they can wave their flags, we can wave ours too. You had a mosquito on your eyebrow. I saved your life. Okay. I got it, Joe. I'm helping. See, I'm holding the pole. Why are you moving it? Well, you let go and then it like went with you. See the bubble? I know what a level is. See the bubble? Yeah. Oh, we'll make it in the middle. Other way. Other way. Smell manly. Mm -hmm. Got that manly must. Good enough for the girls I go out with. Got it. Mm -hmm. Off. <laughs> nah. Nope. Nope. No pooping on the porch. Go on. Go on. Shoo. Don't like chicken poop on the porch or in my rocking chairs. <laughs> So I was gonna show you guys something really cute. One second. Hey little buddy. This is an Arctic turn. 
a baby Arctic Tern. We have a ton of them up here. They're migratory birds. And what had happened was we went to the post office yesterday and we're driving down this road that's near a lake. And I saw this little guy just running in the middle of the road, frantic. And I told Joe, stop back up, I saw something. I honestly thought it was someone's chick, like a baby chicken, right? Like it got out of someone's yard or something, I don't know. So we went back and I'm like, oh, that's definitely not a chicken. He has webbed feet like a duck, but he has a really long pointy beak. Anyway, I looked it up and he is a baby Arctic Tern. And we went and we're looking for his mom, any sign of a nest, siblings, anything like that. And we didn't find anything, but what we did find was this huge bald eagle sitting up in a tree right above where we found him. And this eagle was just creeping, you know? And I wouldn't doubt it that the eagle went down and ransacked the nest. These Arctic terns make a nest on the ground, so they don't make them up in trees. It's very easy to get these little guys if an eagle really wanted to. So back on the farm, we noticed that when predators would come in, the chicks would all scatter. Like when our hens would have chicks, they would scatter. And sometimes one would run off so far, it would not be able to find its way back to the nest. So I'm afraid that that's what's happened with this little guy. And uh, we can't find a nest, we can't find his parents. And Joe's like, let's just put him back down by the lake and see if he goes and goes back to his nest on his own. So we went down, put him down in the lake and he swam away. Went to the post office, came home, couple hours later and he was back up on the road again but in a different spot just frantically running around so I'm like you know he's gonna get eaten he's gonna be something's meal probably the eagle so we rescued him brought him home and we have called the wildlife rescue organization we're waiting for a call back from them they rescue all kinds of animals from bats to bears and uh, their website even says like migratory birds anything like that to call them so We've called them and left a message. Hopefully they'll give us a call back soon. But for now, we're feeding this little guy some herring that we had for fishing. Thankfully we had a ton of frozen herring in the refrigerator or in the freezer. So Joe's been thawing that out. Joe's so sweet, you know what I'm saying? He just act like he's all like, I'm a man and stuff. But he just got the biggest heart. I mean, he's a man, but you know what I'm saying? Like he's super cute. He's thawing out this fish, slicing it up into slices, giving it to the little baby bird. Anyway, he's got a little bath in there. He's doing well. Did you take a little bath? You got your bath all dirty. Yeah, I know. Where'd your mama go, huh? Yeah, you're gonna be okay. I'll get you taken care of. Do you want lunch? Are you hungry? Got some herring in here. This is what he's been eating since yesterday. And he just gobbles it up. All right, we've got the three front posts in and we're gonna do three in the back as well. And we might be able to get the roof done today too. I'm not sure. It's really starting to rain out here, making it kind of miserable. Joe's over there pretty much soaking wet. Yeah. 
All right, the hardest part is done. This is always the most time consuming when we're building a structure, getting everything squared off properly and the foundation set. <laughs> and it wasn't supposed to be this rainy today, but you know, that's Alaska for you. I mean, it's, it's pretty much rain raining right now. I'm hiding underneath this little awning here, hanging out with the chickens. So got a lot done, even though we did it in the rain. Just wanted to give you guys a quick update on my stomach issue. I know a lot of you have asked, you know, how's your stomach doing? For those that might have missed it, I was diagnosed with three stomach ulcers about almost a year ago now, actually. Um, and they're just not my friend. They don't want to heal. We've done different medications. Uh, that's one of the reasons I'm back on the keto diet, which is. Um, one of the reasons, because one of the reasons is, you know, I believe fully in the proper human diet, meat, vegetables, the things that our ancestors lived on. So Joe and I have cut out sugar, most carbs, processed foods, all the things with exception every once in a while. We are not like hardcore strict, like for someone's birthday, we might have a piece of birthday cake. Um, but for the most part, we are trying to eat a really good diet, which will help with the stomach issues uh, that, that I'm having. I've got these three ulcers that don't want to seem to heal for anything and I've gotten so many recommendations from all of you and I'm so grateful it is a little overwhelming though sometimes um, I've tried honey while honey helps with the pain it doesn't cure them uh, I've been on several different medications from the doctor a couple of them I've had to quit because of the side effects and you guys know me in medication I'm like there's got to be a natural way <laughs> and a lot of you mentioned cabbage juice and I did some research and apparently there was a study done in the 1940s with people that had ulcers. And uh, if you don't know, ulcers basically are a sore on your stomach lining or even right into the top of your small intestine. And it can be caused from lots of different things. I really think that mine were potentially caused by stress because I never really was addicted to like NSAIDs, like ibuprofen, I've, I've never really taken a lot of that, never been alcoholic. Um, like H. pylori bacteria, I tested negative for that because uh, I did have endoscopy done in Virginia before we moved here where they go in with the camera down your throat into your stomach, which is how they found the ulcers. So um, anyway, the cabbage juice, apparently there was a study done in the 1940s and I have to look at it, but it was something like 10 or 12 people with stomach ulcers, like all of them were healed except for two of them from drinking cabbage juice. And apparently cabbage juice has a component in it that is very healing, not only for ulcers, but the gut in general. So if you have like gastritis or like issues like that, it's supposed to be really helpful for that. So I am on like day 12 or 13 of juicing cabbage. I went and got this amazing juicer. I love it. It literally takes whatever you put in it and just puts out nothing but juice. I've had a crappy juicer before and it left a lot of like the, the food in there and it was nasty and I had to return it but this one is the bomb I'll link it for you guys I really love it uh, I got it on Amazon so anyway I'm on like day 12 or 13 I've noticed that the pain has lessened a little bit but it hasn't cured me yet so I'm all about trying to find natural remedies uh, but with that being said I have gone ahead and scheduled another endoscopy for next month and I'm gonna go back in. They put you under, put the camera down your throat, through your esophagus, into your stomach. Um, one, to see if the ulcers are still a cause of my pain. If they haven't healed yet and if they haven't healed, why not? They most definitely should have healed by now. They were very small ulcers. They weren't big. They weren't bleeding ulcers, nothing like that. So it's really weird that the pain is still there. The other thing I shared before, but I think it was on an Instagram live, is they also found in there that I have a, I have a very small hiatal hernia, uh, which basically your diaphragm separates your lower GI tract, like your intestines, your stomach, all that good stuff from your upper chest cavity, which houses your lungs and your heart and all that and all that. And a hiatal hernia is basically, you know, that hole in your diaphragm that your esophagus goes through, right? Your food goes down through your esophagus and then goes into your stomach, which is under the diaphragm. It's when that hole is like a little bit bigger or a lot a bit bigger than it's supposed to be. And essentially your stomach starts to push up through that hole into your chest cavity. 
Now, my hiatal hernia, thankfully, is, uh, oh, it was at the time only two centimeters, which is considered very insignificant. <laughs> They did not think that was the cause of my stomach pain. A lot of people have hiatal hernias their whole life and they're asymptomatic and they never even know it. So, uh, but the issue is symptoms with the hiatal hernia and ulcers are very similar. So my hiatal hernia may have gotten worse in the last few months. Maybe it's still the ulcers. Maybe I've gotten more ulcers or a new one that's bigger. I do not know. All I know you guys is off and on intermittently I am in pain, like today, Joe brought me a chair. I had to come and sit down. It's just this gnawing, burning pain in between my breastbone all the way through to my back. And it just kind of feels like you take a coal out of the fireplace and you just sit it in there right inside and it's just this slow burn and it is horrible and I'm sick of it. <laughs> it is the first thing that has been a consistent problem for me in my life. I am super healthy. Never even broken a bone, never had any issues. Um, but to say that it doesn't kind of scare me a little bit would be a lie. It's it's kind of scary that it's not healing, not going away. So anyway, got that appointment next month to go back in with the camera, see what the problem is, and then we'll just go from there. But until then, I'm gonna continue juicing the cabbage and hope that by the grace of God, maybe it will heal my stomach ulcers or whatever the problem is, so. One more thing, I just wanna to mention too, um, cause I know a lot of you on like previous videos uh, throw out recommendations and stuff, which is totally fine and I, I appreciate that. I actually learn a lot from you guys sometimes, but I have had CAT scans, ultrasounds, um, blood work. I've had, you know, so on the ultrasounds and everything, they checked my pancreas, my liver, my kidneys, all the things, my gallbladder, all my labs came back normal. So all the testing that I've had, the only thing that's been found are the ulcers through the endoscopy that I had in Virginia. The gastroenterologist did tell me when she goes back in for the second endoscopy, if she doesn't find anything, like if the ulcers are healed and she doesn't find anything, um, she does want to look more into my gallbladder and she also wants to send me to like an allergy doctor to see if I have developed some kind of a food allergy, which I don't know. Oh, I don't really think it's that because this isn't like I'm just getting like, you know, bubble guts and diarrhea and bloating and gas. This is a pain, a very specific pain that never changes. It's in the same spot every time. So um, anyway, but I did want to mention that because a lot of you say, oh, you should get your gallbladder checked. Oh, you should get your pancreas checked. I've already had them all checked. They're normal and fine, uh, but we are going to do some additional testing after the endoscopy and take it a little bit further if nothing is found during that procedure. So just say a little prayer for me guys, because this sucks. <laughs> like it really does. Like here we are retired here in Alaska, living our dream. We've been waiting our whole lives for this and just simple projects like today where I'm just standing here helping Joe, you know, uh, sometimes it's just not a good day. So hoping we can figure this out and, and I can get better. There's a little froggy. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Look at him, Joe. Please, sir, don't catch me. We built the whole thing from four by four posts and two by sixes. Joe is measuring and cutting the, for the roof rafters. And then we got green metal roofing to match all the other structures that we've done so far. We did green metal roofing on Parker and Callan's tree fort, green metal roofing on the chicken coop and also the sheep shelter. So we're just trying to keep everything matching. You guys know how I am. I'm a little crazy like that. You know, even with the homestead, I like things to match. I like them to look good. I like everything to flow and have a 
spot and you know just makes sense so that's what we're doing now the roof rafters and then maybe we'll get the metal roofing on today i don't know we'll see we're gonna rake all this out level it out probably put some pallets down or something to stack the wood on so they're not on the ground but other than that i mean i think it's i think it looks great joe looks good mm. joe you're so handy you know mm. that? you're just so handy Yeah. Joe, you're talking too much. Just need you to calm that down there, buddy, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Quit trying to steal the show. <laughs> it's not always about you. Mm -hmm. Pretty mom. Hi, Abel. Well, it's just wet and nasty now. Like at this point, we might as well just keep going. Just put the roof on and everything, right, Joe? I mean, we're already muddy and soaking wet. <laughs> I went in a few minutes ago and fed the boys. Uh, so they're good to go. And I think we're just gonna push through and maybe at least try to get the metal on the roof tonight. What do you think, Joe? Think. think we can do it? So I drink like three cups of this a day. It's pretty much like if you blended up a dead body and you drink it. What? That's like the equivalent of what it tastes like, in my opinion. Did you look in the, the first yeah, day, I did just straight cabbage juice and it was horrifying. Like, I barely could get it down. It's just, cabbage is so pungent and and spicy actually it almost has like a horseradish flavor to it and it's very concentrated like this when you juice it so i started putting one whole cabbage three celery stalks and one apple and the apple and the celery really helps to kind of mask the flavor of the cabbage and i'm able to get it down but yeah i drink like one cup in the morning one in the afternoon and then one at night and it's disgusting, but it's really good for you apparently. I'm 
being givers only take Stop for a minute, stop and breathe for a minute. Don't get over your head, try to listen instead. Bison, some bison fur, huh? Yeah. Oh, you look just like your dad, buddy. <laughs> oh, little <Wow>. Joey. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Babe, put your butt in. What are you doing? Babe, no. Babe. I wouldn't want to be hiding under this chicken coop with anybody but you, Joe. Oh. Where are you going, Joe? Don't be scared. All the thing, other things like H. pylori back to back H. pylori. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Sitting out in the rain. Sitting in so much pain. <laughs> Alright, you're dismissed. I'm dismissed? Look, Moses. Don't talk to <laughs> your wife that way. Well, woman. Woman? Did you call me woman? Yeah, you got wood chips in your beard. Yeah, Jesus called Mary woman. That doesn't mean you can call me woman. You're not a woman? I don't know, Joe. What is a woman? <laughs> don't answer that. <laughs> Just gonna do an all nighter. It's been a while since we did an all nighter, Joe. <laughs> I wasn't talking about that. McNasty. You just ruined the shot with your dumb face. Why did you do that? Gosh. Joe, take two.